because the, the Muslims, they pray to the Mecca stone, right? And then he said, good is the cross, brother, that you, that you got, that we wear on our chains, man. So that's the, that's that wood, that cross, man. So he said, we serve other gods when we wear that type of stuff because he gave us, he gave us strict okay. orders, right? Why you all love God like that? Why all don't love together like that? That's the shit like that. Why all don't love all like that? You said, why, why don't we all love God? Okay, I said, why you love? Okay, why God said, okay, why don't love all like God says? Why don't love like all together? Oh, now God said he don't love everybody. He don't love no, Nah, he said, give me Amos chapter, give me Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this. Watch this, mighty king. God say he's supposed to love. He's not supposed to be Everybody is supposed to be Everybody is supposed to be He's supposed to love everybody. He's supposed to love everybody. So the only thing I want you to do is go to Christ. So, so Christ, Christ said this. Go to Christ. Christ said this about... Um, Loving everybody, man. I got, I got to read this for you, King. Give me Amos chapter three and verse one. No, Check this out, Mighty King. This is the book of Amos. We'll, we'll go there in a few minutes. This is the book of Amos chapter three and verse one. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. O children of who? O children of Israel. No, the whole world. O children of Israel. No, love everybody. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying. You only have I known. Hey, the most I say, you only have I known. Read on. Of all the families of the earth. Of all the families on the earth, brother. Right? So that's not loving everybody. Watch this. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Uh -huh. So he said he going to punish us for our iniquities. He said because he only came for the Israelites. He didn't come for everybody else. Read what you got, King. Come. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Hey, this is how special we are to him. Watch this. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The word holy means separate, man. We are set apart people. We're peculiar. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen me. The Lord thy God has chosen. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna tape it again. The Lord thy God has chosen us. D. Where the tape at? Okay, come read. To be a special people. To be a special people. Unto Himself. Unto Him what? Unto Himself. Read. Above all people. That are upon the face of the earth. So he said, we above all people. Well, he said, you see what he upset, but I know, but... but you, you, you got it. You, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me read it again real quick. Let me read it one more time, Mark. Go read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people... Brother, you got to show something. Call brother. Yeah, brother, you got to show... You got, we, we dealing with the brother. The young brother, the young lion trying to learn something, King. Just give us a little bit of respect. Well, okay. Give me, give me, give me 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Real quick. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Let's see what the scriptures say. Let's see what the scriptures say with the, with the elder just blatting out things. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done in decency and order. What the Lord say? Let all things be done in decency and order. What y'all was trying to say? Let all things be done in decency and order. Brother, they got to be decency and order. If I'm building with the young brother, you got to let me build with the young brother. Read what you got, King. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. We are a holy people unto the Lord thy God. He didn't say all, he said thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen me. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. To be a special people, read on. Unto himself. No, to everybody. Unto himself. No, the whole world. Unto himself. Read on. Above all people. Above all people. That are on the face of the earth. So he said, we are special above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Proverbs what, brother? Whatever book you Okay, give me Proverbs 31 and 9. Somebody give me Proverbs 31 and 9. Hey, this is for you. Hey, Elder, this is for you. The Lord said what? Shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Brother, you, 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 brother. Oh, and all praises to the Most High. We know. We know, King. That's why we came to share the word with our brothers. But you interrupting the word, brother. Give me Mark chapter 4 and verse 14. Because I'm going to tell you what you're doing. Watch this. Watch this. Mark 14 and 4. 4 and 14. Salaki. Come on. Watch this, King. 
Who got it? Who ever got it? Let's bring it out. Get the book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 14. The sower soweth the sword. The, the word. Slocky. Get it. Read it right. The sower swore the word. So it says the sower soweth the word. Meaning we out here, we saw in the word. Right? Read. Verse 15. Uh -huh. And these are they by the wayside. And these are they by the wayside. Brothers and sisters is coming up trying to hear the word. Read. Where the word is so. Where the word is going up. Read on. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word. Brother, you kind of moving like Satan by taking the word from the brother when, when I'm teaching him. I know, brother, but you, you interrupting the word, brother. You interrupting the word, King. So don't interrupt the word, brother. Right? So I'm going to bring out one more precept, man. Um, give me, give me, uh, give me uh, John chapter 1 and verse 6, and I'm going to pass it to the next mighty speaker. This is the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 6. John 3, 6, uh, give, me, give me 2 John, verse 6. I'm sorry. Salaki. 2 John, 2 John, verse 6. This is the book of 2 John, chapter 1 and verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. So we got to walk after God. We got to keep his law, statutes, and commandments, right? And I'm going to pass it on to the next mighty speaker to bring out the word and edify you, brothers. I'm going to say, Kwam Yashirala in the Hebrew tongue. Kwam Yashirala. Kwam Yashirala. Kwam Yashirala. Kwam Yashirala. Kwam Yashirala. Kwam All praises. You got it. All praises to the Most High. We are the Hebrew Israelites, and we've come out to teach our people who they are according to the Bible. That your true heritage is that of an Israelite, that you are not a proverb or a byword, that you are not black or African American. We've come to talk to the so-called blacks, Native Americans, Hispanics, and we come out to this neighborhood today to edify our people because we love our people. That's why we're going to speak with our brother here and answer all the questions the that's best that we're able to. That's and that's why we're also going to deal with you, Elder. We're going to get something from Proverbs for you. Right, but you ain't supposed to be out here like they said, setting that bad example, setting that tone. You probably, probably, probably it's not bad to have a beer. Yeah, because you keep interrupting. Just hold. Ecclesiastes 31, verse 27. Right, this is also wisdom right here. This is from the book of wisdom that we're going to give to you. First get knowledge, then get wisdom, then or uh, understanding. Right. So you know a few scriptures. That's good that you know a few scriptures. But you gotta be able to hold your own hold you gotta be able to, to, to hold your peace. When you see two brothers speaking with each other, you shouldn't interrupt the man in the midst of his speech. Just like when you speaking, you wouldn't want me to interrupt you, right? Right? You said you're a businessman, so you go out and you're in the middle of a business deal, you talking with one of your customers, you don't want somebody to just come right up on you and start interrupting you, do you? We, no, we telling you to stand down and just hold up. Hold tight and we're going to get to it, whatever questions you have as well, alright, Elder? Just hold, well then, then sit back and learn. That's it. Just just listen and learn. We got you. And if you got any other questions, brother, feel free uh, to, to shout them out to us. What you got? The book of Ecclesiastes. Bring it out for him, young lion. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 27. Wine is as good as life to a man. If it be drunk moder moderately. If it be drunk what? Moderately. If it be drunk what? Moderately. So what the, what the scriptures are saying is, is, is wine... Drinking a beer, drinking wine, having strong drink. It's not bad. It's good. Watch, dude, just watch this right here. Uh, it's all right if you drink. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Then, then you can talk. Only one person can talk at a time, my brother. Right? So wine is good if it's drunk moderately, Elder. You don't want to over drink so that people can't even understand the words that you're saying. Right? Read on. What life is then to a man that is without wine, for it was made to make men glad. Wine was made to make us glad, to make us have a good time. Solomon said in his book, Eat in Ecclesiastes, drink, eat, drink, and be merry. Right. right. So wine was made for us to have a good time. We're not telling you that you can't have your beer and have a good time on your day off and enjoy yourself, right? But we're saying just be, be cordial, right? Calm down. Allow us to speak 
so that one person That's speaking at once. I, I can go to my house, air conditioned, bring, up got wine bring it up. Beer. Wine measurely drunk and in season, bright of gladness of the heart. You skip 31 29. Okay, bring it out. No, no, go drink, go all the way through. Go all the way through. Whatever you skip, go back to it. Read. All right. Wine measurably drunk and in season bright and gladness of the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. Right. When you drink your wine measurably, it brings cheerfulness and gladness to the heart. It makes it, it, it does good for you, right? When you're having a long week, when you don't have a hard work week, when you, when you go back home, like you said, and you want to sit down in the air condition and put your feet up, it's nothing bad with having a beer. But when you're out in public, you don't want to be walking around drunk so that people can't even understand the words that you're saying, right? right? So that you could get hurt. We standing in the middle of a throughway on on the highways and the hedges, 35 miles per hour. God forbid a car come speeding by and you walking through the street drunk right we don't want you to get hurt elder we just want you to listen and learn i'm not that it's, it's a, uh, read on but why but why drunk it with excess why i'm drunk it with what with excess make it bitterness of the mind Wine drunk in excess make bitterness of the mind. See, it got you pulling out your tool, right? We, we ain't trying to, we, we ain't about that, right? We all got them on us right now. Well, we not about to, we not trying to bring no violence or no harm to our brothers out of heart, right? We don't want no harm or no violence to come to you, elder. That's why we saying calm down. And listen, what is said in the scriptures is when you drink wine moderately, it's good. But when you drink wine over excessively, when you drink wine too much, when you drink too much of that cold 45, it puts you in a bad state of mind. Uh, okay. well, it makes it so that you can't even listen to the Bible while it's coming out. Right? I don't fuck with nobody. With Read what you got, King. With brawling and quarreling. Verse 30. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. We don't want you out here looking foolish to your neighbors, to the people that you know and you see every day. Right, and they don't want to see you like that. We don't want to see you like that. Right? Read on. Fool till he offend. In dimensionness, strength. Strength make and maketh wounds. Right, read that again. Read it clear, come on. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offend. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool until you offend somebody. We try to we are we 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 try to slow you down so you don't offend anybody out here, right? So you don't offend your own self and look like a fool amongst your own people, right? Finish reading. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. It diminishes strength when you drink in excess. That's why you can't stand. You can't stand up straight because you got too much of the Colt 45 in you right now. <laughs> Our people. Right, no, hey, I, I, I know you're not joking. That's the thing. We want you to slow down. If you're going to drink another one, do it inside the house where you can't get hurt outside the house. With all these cars going by, people going by, you don't know what can happen. Slow down, Elder. Finish the scripture. Out. Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine and despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despiteful words. Right, we're not giving you despiteful words, but we are rebuking you right now because you drank too much. Now, if you would have came out here and you would have been on your first beer, you're still able to talk without your words slurring. No, you just had a 40 ounce before that 45, that cold 45, and you're going to go get another one. But then your words still going to be slurring. We can't even have a good conversation with you. Right? Who I'm You're dealing with your brothers up here. We're your brothers. Right? And we're trying to do our best to work with you and deal with you. We brought out a scripture from Proverbs, right? Now we're bringing out more wisdom, which is telling you getting drunk the way you're getting drunk is not good to do. You ain't going to do nothing but hurt yourself. With that pistol in your pocket, you can hurt somebody. Right? Right or wrong, with that pistol in your pocket and too much liquor on your on, on your on your mind, too much liquor inside your inside your gut, you might be a hurtful. You might hurt somebody, man. Right, right. And we don't want to hurt our people. We want our people to come together and to build up the community. You don't want to go kill somebody in your community. Save that talk and save that violence for the for the enemy, for the white man. Come on. 
Because when we first started talking, you was talking about being friends with the white man. Because you got to do business with the white man. You got to deal with the white man, but... Read on, King. And press not upon him with urging him to drink. See, it says urge you not to drink. We trying to tell you, don't come out your house so drunk. It's very hard for people to understand what you're saying. It's very hard for people to deal with you when you're walking around and you're in that state of mind. When you're drinking in over excess. That's all. You understand, Elder? Am I messing with anybody? No, you're not messing with nobody, but you won't allow us to have a good conversation with you. That's all. What you got, King? Right. This is the book of Proverbs. Bring it out. Chapter, chapter 16 and verse 21. Folly is joy to him. Folly is joy to him. So foolishness and madness is joy to you. Okay, move over, Junior, so you know. Proverbs is my favorite book of the Bible. Come on, keep going. Folly is joy to him that dis that distilleth up wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. A man of understanding walketh uprightly. See, we brought something out from Proverbs, and what we brought out what we brought out from Proverbs is telling you to walk uprightly. We gonna read some more from Proverbs for you. We got some more Proverbs for you, right? We don't. Without counsel, uh, purpose are disappointed. Without counsel, what you're doing is, is going to be disappointing to you. You're not going to succeed in what you're doing if you don't have wise counsel. And right now, you got the elder who gave you wise counsel, told you to calm down. Told you elder to elder, looked you man to man, eye to eye, brother. He said, just calm down and allow the word to come out. Allow the scriptures to come out. Right? Because you are elder, you see the young brothers dealing with you with respect because you are an elder. Right? While we still trying to talk to the young brother. You got any more questions, brother? What's up? What, what's your names? What's your name, brother? Bernard? I'm going to call you Bernard. That's all right? All right. My name is Yawasaki or Joseph. All right. What's your name, brother? Mananko? How I say that? Blanca. Okay, nice to meet you, Blanca. Nice to meet you, Blanca. And did you understand what the brother was teaching you when he said because you're from Haiti that you would be from the tribe of Levi? Because Haiti is just the name of a land. And that land was named by... Who? I'm talking about me. Hold on, Bernard. 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 Hold on one second. We're going to let you talk. Bernard, give it one second. We're going to let you talk, brother. That's one of the best books in the Bible. I agree with you. Now hold on. Now hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. Blanca, did you understand that because you're from the tribe of Levi, or because your family's from Haiti, that you would actually be from the tribe of Levi according to the Bible? Did you understand what the young brother was saying? All right. So what we was just trying to, uh, to, to get across to you is to show you that, number one, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is actually a man of color, right? And he's from the tribe of Judah, right? You would be from the tribe of Levi, according to what we read for you in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, that our people was brought over here on ships. Would you agree, Blanca, that your forefathers, your ancestors who were brought to Haiti were brought over here on ships? That's and then put in slavery in the cane That's fields and sugar cane fields in the rice fields and they were put in slavery That's while they were in Haiti. Now, one good I thing, Haiti actually fought for Haiti actually fought for their independence and Haiti That's won their independence. Right? But ever since then you still see Haiti impoverished. Why is a nation that fought for their independence that has some of the, the largest gold reserves in the world still so impoverished? Right? You got to ask yourself that. That's because we're dealing with a nation that hates us. We're dealing with enemies, right? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 16. And give me 28, Deuteronomy 28 and 37. Right? Read that, King. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 16. Curse shall that be in the city, and curse shall that be in the field. Right, cursed shall we be in the city and cursed shall we be in the field. So that's what happened to the people of Haiti. They still under the curses. Just like our people here in America, we still under curses. Right, and that's why we out in our own communities 
destroying our communities instead of building our communities up. Allowing our elders to get destroyed off the liquor that they sell to us, destroying his liver, destroying his mind. Right? Instead of drinking moderately and modestly, he's drinking over excess and it destroys us and it destroys our people. Because the Most High said we would be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Right? That's how you recognize that you are actually from the tribe of Israel. Because these curses are upon us and they're upon only our people. You don't see the Indian man or the Chinese man, the Japanese man walking around his uh, the neighborhood like this. Right? You don't see... Uh, uh, the, you see, you see our people, right? You see our so-called Native American, the so-called black man, right? And that's why they call us these things. They call us nigger. They call us black, right? That's a certain thing that they call us. Read what you got from young lion. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse thirty-seven. Bring it out. Bring it out. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations. See, they said we would be an astonishment, a proverb and a byword. But the elder keep asking for proverbs, right? We would be called a proverb, meaning people would look at us and call us black. Meanwhile, you look at your shirt and your shorts, right? You look at my gloves. Those is black. Our skin complexion ain't black, right? We are beautiful shades of brown, right? And because of who we are and where our people was brought in slavery, we're able to tell that we are from the 12 tribes of Israel. You get that, Blanca? Right? So you would be an Israelite, Blanca, according to the Bible. Right? And instead of calling yourself black, which is a proverb or a byword, instead of calling each other nigger, instead of calling each other African-American, instead of calling yourself Haitian, you would call yourself an Israelite. Uh, right? And you would be an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. If you look right down here on the bottom of this sign where the lion is, you'll see the 12 tribes. Right? And you would be from the tribe of Levi because your ancestors and your father, they're from Haiti. Right? Hey, hey, hey. Bernard. We're going to bring him out. Where, where's your father from, Bernard? He's an African American or he's from Haiti as well? No, my daddy is from War West Virginia. World War II, Virginia. So he's a, he, his father, his father's father was slaves. Okay. So being that your father's father was slaves, do you know that that would make you an Israelite and that you have to begin to well, repent and keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High? Right. right. Because if not, these curses would come upon us. Finish that out, King. No. Whether the Lord shall lead thee. Wherever the Lord would lead you. So if you go to Haiti. If you go to West uh, 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 World War, Virginia, if you down here in North Carolina, when your people were brought over here and they were put in chains and they were made slaves, right? That's why it's all right, brother. We still talking to you, Blanca. When, when, when your people was brought over to Haiti and they were made slaves, right? No matter where you would go, the Most High, the most high would tell you that you are an Israelite according to these curses. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 54 now. Right? We're going to keep reading because that's our job. Like the brother brought out mighty in the spirit, brother Choni, he said it's our job to come out to the highways and to the hedges. That's why when you keep saying, where's our church? Our church, we are the church. Right? We are the temple of the living God. That's what we read earlier in Acts. That's right. Right? What you want, King? The brother Choni brought that out mighty in the spirit for you. Huh? Uh, what you got, King? You do the right 28 54, right? All right, bring that out for him, King. The book of Deuteronomy, 28, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother. His eye will be evil toward his brother. Right? We don't want you to fall over. That's We don't have an evil eye towards our brother. People, people rolling around in the neighborhood, they got an evil eye toward their brother. And instead of building up their community and helping out their brothers, they want to rob, steal, and destroy from their brothers. Right? They want to look at their brother and say, oh, the brother got more than what I got. And they try and they, they want to pull out guns to shoot each other. Like this brother said earlier, kill him dead. Nah. You don't supposed to have an evil eye towards your brother. You understand what I'm saying, Bernard? You're supposed to be able to listen. Right? Drop what you got, King, and bring out what you got. This is the book of Matthews, chapter 4, and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. Do what? 
Repent. Do what? Repent. See, so just like G, just like Yahalashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus did, he said he went out from that time, right from the time he was baptized, he went out and he told our people to repent. That's what we out here to tell you to do, to repent. The same with you, brother, to repent. Right? It's our job to recognize that we're Israelites and then to repent brother, as brother, Hebrew brother, Israelites. Brother, brother. Don't lean too hard on the table, brother. Just stand up straight. Yeah, don't put the bear on the on the sign. Right? He's all right, Tony. He all right. He all right. He all right. Right. You got to be sober-minded. Come finish, re finish reading what you got. Then you can get him sober-minded. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 17. For the time that Yahweh shall begin to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right, repent, man. This is the time that we coming out to you to tell you to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see all the things that's happening every day in the world. You see everything that's happening on a world scale. You got right over here in Rocky Mount, you got a tornado that just touched down and destroyed the Pfizer building. Right? The Pfizer building. And it was Pfizer who made billions off of putting the jab in the people. For two years, Pfizer made that jab up and they put that jab in the people and made billions. And the Most High went and destroyed their, their, their facility. And who that's hurting? That's hurting our people, because it was our people working in that factory over there in Rocky Mount. Right? That's not hurting the big man. That's not hurting the, the owner of Pfizer. Nah, they still making money. They got tons of other drugs that they selling and that they manufacturing across the world. The biggest drug dealers in the world is Pfizer, Merck, GlaxoSmithKline. They dealing drugs every day. They got our people stuck on pills. Oxycodone, Viagra. Ambians, you name it. And our people's out here stuck on pills. Stuck on stupid. The elder over here drinking a Coke 45. The Billy D. <laughs> drinking that Billy D and he can't even hold himself up. Right? Go ahead, King. What's your question? Right. Nothing but profit is made off the backs of our people. And they've been doing it since they brought us over here on slave ships. They've been stealing land from the Native Americans. All the Native American brothers and sisters in this neighborhood, they had their land stolen from them. Right? All the so-called blacks and, 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 uh, and West Indians, Haitians in this neighborhood, they, was, they, they were brought over here on slave ships. And they've been profiting off of putting us in chains ever since they put us in chains when they brought us over here in slavery. They make nothing but profit off of our backs. And they build up this country, and then they don't want to give us nothing. They give billions of dollars to Ukraine. Did they ever think about giving us anything? But see, that's why when you read the scriptures, we don't look for this nation to save us. We don't look for this nation to give us things and, 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 and then say that all is well, all is forgiven, because they gave us reparations, because they gave us welfare, because they gave us a wick check. No, we don't need that. Keep, keep all your, your, your handouts, because all is not well. The Most High seeks a righteous recompense on his enemies. And his enemies is the so-called white man and the people that put us, his people, into slavery. And put us into those jails and profit off the backs of us, paying brothers in jail 10, 20, 30 cents an hour. And then go and charge us, the people that's out here, 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars for those same products that they had somebody making for 10 to 20 cents on the dollar. You see how the game work? That's the game they're running on us. They, 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 they make it cheap, they buy it cheap, make it cheap, and then sell it to us and overprice it by selling it to us at an over high rate. They do that with the drugs, they do that with the clothes, they do that with cars and car parts. Whatever you could think of. You go in the store to buy a 99 cent Arizona, it sounds like it's cheap. But when you look at the ingredients that they got inside of it, it's carcinogens in it, 
It's different. Uh, uh, all is 23, 24, tw uh, 22 grams, I believe, of, of sugar that you're putting into your body in one tiny little can of soda, one tiny little can of Arizona. You drink a Pepsi, a Pepsi was built down here in North Carolina. You, you drink a Pepsi, Pepsi got uh, uh, unborn baby fetuses in it. Ginger ale don't even have ginger in it. Correct. Like the ox said, ginger ale don't even got ginger in it. No matter what they doing, they doing it to try and destroy our people. You with me, Blanca? Yeah. Come on, read what you got, King. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 2 and verse 5. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. That means come and let us walk after his commandments. Right? So we out here to teach you some of the commandments today. Have you ever heard of some of the commandments that the Most High has given to his people? You got like one or two commandments you can name for me? Anything. What you know as the commandments. What are some of the commandments that you might know that you even think that you keep? You don't know? All right, so we're going to go through a couple because the Most High said come and walk in his light. And to walk in his light means to walk in his commandments, right? That's right. Get Proverbs 6 and 23 for him. We got to walk in the light. I understand. We got to try and make money for our family. But one of the things, here, read what you got and I'm going to have to drop that. This is the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 15 and saying the time is fulfilled. That's what we're trying to tell you. The time is fulfilled. The time is here. The time is now for us to start keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and recognize, Blanca, that you are a Hebrew Israelite and you are to live by the laws, laws, statutes, and commandments. Because when you begin to live by his laws, statutes, and commandments, you will be successful, right? You will be able to feed your family, like you said. That's one of the most important things for you to do, to feed your children, right? That's what the Most High wants you to be able to do. Read on. And the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. And we come seeking after the kingdom. We seek first the Most High's kingdom. By keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Coming out to the highways and the hedges and teaching and teaching our brothers how to keep the laws of the Most High God, Yahweh. God. Our power. God. Right? And Yahweh is what, uh, 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 what our power is. Not the power of the rest of the world. Right? Yahweh is our power. What's going on, King? How you doing? All right, you come over, get out the middle of the street. We don't want you to get, get messed up by no car. You come over to the table. We got a, a card or a flyer for you. Come grab one. Come grab a flyer, King. Right? Uh, drop that and give me Deuteronomy 6. Start at verse 1, and you bring what you got. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. For the commandments, for the commandments. Just, yeah, stand there on the, in front of the table so you can grab. It's all right, so you can stand in front of the table. Stand on the other side, brother. Right, here, King. Right, right on the other side, right in front, so you can see the sign. We want you to see the sign. Right? Read what you got, King. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. For the commandments is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. So you see the brother told you just walk in the light. Right? So when the Bible's telling us to walk in the light, it's telling us to walk in the commandments. For the commandments is a lamp. Right? For the commandments is a lamp. And the law is light. And the law is light. You get that, Blanca? To walk in the light, you got to walk in the commandments. The commandments is a lamp and the law is a light. Right? Read on. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So you've seen us talking to that brother Bernard, we was reproving him. Because we was trying to teach him the way of life. Because we don't want him out here walking in, the, in darkness. God. Leading himself to death. Right. Because he violates the commandments. For the wages of sin are death. Right. Right? And we don't want our people out here killing themselves off of, off of bottles of Coke 45 all day. Right. right. Right? We don't want our people out here killing themselves, smoking themselves to death. No, right. I, listen, I just want to tell y'all, I mentioned, uh, I think it was Georgia last, like, last year, Georgia, 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 Okay. At the Rice, Rice Festival. Okay. Don, all praises. Remember that, right? Yeah, man, we out, we outside, brother. I swear to God, hey, that's why I was like, yo, I remember you. It's all right, it's all right. All praises, my brother. All praises, all praises. We glad, we, we glad you remember. Watch out, watch out, see? And it's raining, so watch yourself. We glad you met us out there at the wine festival, at the, at the rice festival. Read on. 
Just the yes, book of Deuteronomy, sir. chapter 6, verse 1. Yes, sir. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commands to teach you, that ye might do them in the land with their... With, with their right, the Most High said that we would do these commandments. He's given us these commandments. He wrote these commandments. Moses wrote these commandments down at the, at the command of the Most High that we would keep his commandments wherever we would, wherever, forever we would go. So in the land that we would go, in order for us to possess that land, we got to keep the commandments. That's why most of us out here is not owning more than what you see right in front of your face. Hardly own our cars. We going out, we making car payments. We got to make mortgage payments. We got to do all these different things. Like I got somebody calling you, Bart Blanca. Right? Read on. Ye go possess it. That's it. Verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments. We got to fear the Most High. Fear the Lord that we will keep his statutes and his commandments. Right, Blanca? It's a fear thing. Like when you talk to your children and you tell your children to do something. You want them to do it because you love them. So you're trying to teach them to do things the right way, right? And then it's a certain fear. You know, as the father, that your children kind of, is a, you want them to be a little scared if they don't listen to you and if they don't do what you say. You want them to fear you. You like, man, I don't want daddy to find out I didn't listen. I don't want daddy to find out I, I, didn't, I didn't do what he told me to do, right or wrong. Right? So that's the same way our Father in Heaven deals with us. That's the same way Yahweh deals with us. We are, we're going to finish this out for you. Which I command thee, thou and thy son. Thou and who? And thy son. Thou and thy sons. These are the things that you're supposed to be teaching to your children. Teaching to your sons. Teach them that the law is a, is a, is a light. Teach them that the commandments are a lamp. That's how he's, being, he's able to be a light in his community. That's how he's able to be a light. And you able to be a light to your family and within your household by teaching your sons and your sons' sons the commandments of the Most High. Teaching them that they are Israelites from the tribe of Levi. Right, Blanca? Always remember that, that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. You don't no longer have to call yourself a proverb and a byword and call yourself Haitian. You actually can call yourself by your true tribal heritage, That's right. which is the tribe of Levi. Right? We learn. And thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be pro prolonged. Ah. So you want to live a long life. Right? You want your children to live a long life. We just read how to do it. By the keeping of his commandments. Teaching them to your sons and your sons' sons. Teaching them that they're Israelites and that they need to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? You got a question, King? I see you pointing us out. Yeah, I want to say that's okay. God gives that question for them. That's to say, um, we say, I am in love there with my son. And I want to have a, he's the baby. He's talking about, uh, He's talking about marrying in other nations. Okay. That's the next chapter over. We oh, can... said, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm in love with my son, my son, and I want to have his baby. That homosexuality spirit. Right. Oh, no. And, and that that's nothing but pride, man. We don't support none of that. That pride flag, we don't support none of that pride flag. You ain't supposed to teach that to your son. Nah, you want to teach your son to find a beautiful woman like his mother. Right? You want to teach your, 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 your son to, to go ahead and find... A woman, not a man. Right there, get it. Uh, Leviticus 20, 13, and 15, get the law on it first. Right, because the mo no, right, no, no. That's why we have it up on the sign. Because you see, they got children going to school learning from transsexuals and from transvestites, from cross dressers. They got children learning from gay people, from lesbian people. And they're like, no, 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 exactly, brother. Right? And and that's not good. I don't like my son like a kid like this because I don't like my son like a son thing. Wait, that's a love. My son like, okay, like, okay, you see, that's you. That's my friend. I love you. But I love my son more than you, but you know. That's that's how I say, but like, okay, I got that's a different baby, mama. I got different baby, mama. I got this one. Baby. All my son got together from me. I love my son. I don't care about this. I don't care about I love my son like that. Like, 
Right. And because you love your son so much, you want to teach him the laws like we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 6. You want to teach your son the commandments. Right. And this is one of the commandments that you want to teach your son. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them have what? Have committed an abomination. So if a man lie with another man, they commit an abomination before the Lord. The Most High sees them as an abomination. So therefore, that's one of the things that you would teach your son. Don't go lying with another man because you love him so much. Right? You love your son so much, you don't want to see him go out there and make that type of choice. And make that type of... Meanwhile, what the world is telling your son is what you see on the sign right there. Right. Right. And you're not willing to let your son get there. You don't want your son to be loving up on another man, hugging up on another man. You got to do that because I say that's I say. Like, okay, that's me. I got friends. But I love my son like a friend. So that's I don't want to do it. 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 I don't want to do it like I do. Right. You don't want your son to come out and do the wrong things that you did. You want your son to learn and to do better. And like we keep reading for you, the only way for you to teach your son, like this brother right here, right? This is actually his son. And he got his son learning the Lord's statutes and commandments on how to do things the right way. And do things according to what the Most High told him to do. Which is to go out to the highways and the hedges and to bring it out. To bring it to his people, the truth. I'm from down there. You, you want your friend, you want your son down, that's something I Come on. Go work in the butterball, or your slave field, or whatever. You want him to have your mind, go play your work. He's saying, instead of working for these factories around here, he wants to teach him how to be an entrepreneur, how to oh, work for himself. That's what you said, that's what you said. You want that suit, that you want you there. I understand. That's again. That's something that you want to do, so that your son has a better life than you. We all want our children, our sons, our nieces and nephews, to have a better life. But it starts with us. You got to make some changes in your life so that your son is able to have a better life. One of those things is to recognize that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. Now you start teaching your son who he is according to the scriptures. You start teaching your son the commandments of the Lord and commandments of the Most High. And that's how he's going to prosper in life. That's how he's going to be able to have that mentality of a king. And he's going to want to have ownership and be an entrepreneur and have his own business. Instead of having to work so hard and be in, feel like he's in slavery like how we feel. Right? By teaching him the Lord's statutes and commandments. By doing a simple thing for your son. Teaching him that he's an Israelite and to repent. That's going to be, make his way prosperous, right? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Train up a child in the way that he should go, right? That's exactly what you're saying you want to do to your son. You want to train him up in the way that he should go. We're telling you the way that he should go is according to the scriptures. According to the word of the Most High, right? We know it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way that he would go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right? So if you begin to train your son up in the Lord's statutes and commandments, if you begin to train your son up according to the scriptures and according to thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible, your son won't depart from it. You get that? You understand that, Blanca? You got to train him up in the scriptures and he won't depart from it. You got to train him up in the Lord's statutes and commandments if you want him to prosper. Right? Read that for him, King. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. Bring it out. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but shall meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Right. You got to teach your son to do according to everything that's written therein. That means you got to pick up this book right here. And you can't let it depart out of your mouth. You always got to constantly be teaching him and training him up. So he won't go away from it and go to the left or to the right. He'll stay on the straight and narrow. And he'll make something. Like you said, you got more than one son. You got more than one child. 
right? So you got a tough job to do, brother. You got to raise up these children and train these children up according to the Lord's statutes and commandments and teach them to repent and teach them that they are Hebrew Israelites. Right? Uh, Finish reading. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. And then thou shalt have what? Good, good success. success. And then thou shalt have what? Good, good success. success. You want your children to have good success. So what did the scripture just say? In order for your children to have good success, make sure that they keep the commandments wherever they should go. Right? No matter where your children go, make sure that they're keeping the commandments. And that's how they're going to find good success. Right? Go ahead. I, I'm listening. Okay, then what now that's on the case again, wait, again, wait, 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 that's the famous pastor. Why, okay, why what now that's it? Me, what my God made for me. Why? Wait, when you say, wait, what, what, what? Okay, he said, again, gay, wait, he said, gay, wait, then. Right, that's the Pope you're looking at. You're looking at the picture of the Pope, and the Pope is... The, uh, a lot of people that are in the Catholic Church are, 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 are white and, they, and, and they're, they're pedophiles. They, they end up messing with the little children. Over three to four hundred uh, 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 priests in the Catholic Church was caught messing with little children. And it's been over 3,000 documented uh, 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 findings when they investigated the, the Catholic Church. So if they just find in 3,000, Going back to the 70s and the 80s, imagine how many young boys been molested. Why not make sense? It, right, no, no, no. It makes sense because they're evil no, and they're wicked. Not, Give me Job 9 and 24. Listen, listen. This is not coming for that. Just don't say men got me for men. Just don't say men got me for something for men. You don't say girl got me for something for girl. But just make the person got me for whatever you want. But you don't say there are men got me or wait for men. Right, that's what we just read. God said, don't put a man with a man. That's an abomination. A woman shouldn't sleep with a woman. We just read that law for you in Leviticus. Right? And one reason why you see this stuff happening is because the wicked run this world. Who's in control of the world? Is it our people or is it the white man? Who? Does it come in like that? The white man is running the world. Who's the biggest politician? And, and black and white, everything, that's the same thing. You got a lot of black people that's wicked too. That try and destroy their own neighborhoods and destroy their own communities with drugs. You got a lot of black people that, 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 that do things that's wrong as well. But it's the white man who sets the tone. It's the white man who makes you think that it's okay but you know, you're not to be a pedophile. But you're not supposed to do it, that's the white man do it. But you're black, you know, you're black, you don't know. Respect, you not do it, that's what Correct. You, they don't have no respect for themselves when you see our people doing it. The white, and we try to follow after the wicked white man. Right? Read that for them, King. <laughs> this is the book of Job, chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. No, the earth is given into the hand of the good people. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. No, the earth is given into the hand of the just people. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. So that's why you're seeing on the sign right there where you see the Pope and you see the, 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 the priest, the Catholic priest. They're wicked. And the earth was given into their hands. Joe Biden, he's wicked. And the earth was given into his hand. President Trump, he's wicked. And the earth was given into his hand. The Pope going all the way back throughout the Catholic Church has always been a wicked man and has done wicked things, right? And the reason that we even have a picture of a white, so-called, so-called white Jesus is because of the Pope and his family. They're the ones who painted that picture, and it's right here in the scriptures. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Read on. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the face of the judges thereof. He covers the face of the judges thereof. Right? So you got the wicked Catholic Church who painted Caesar Borgia as the white Jesus. You see that down at the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the sign here. It was, it was the white man who painted a white Jesus who tried to take away and steal our heritage from us. Right? And that's because the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. See, the scriptures tell us everything. You want to know what to teach your son? 
you pick up this script, these, this Bible, and you teach them this Bible. That's because right. just like we just read in the book of Joshua, that's what's going to help your son to find good success. That's right. You want to get out of the rut that you in? You want to get out of the, the mud and the miry clay? You want to get off the bottom? Pick up the Bible. Read the scriptures. Begin to do the work of the Lord. And that starts in your household with your children. Right? I got a couple more scriptures, then we're going to pass it off to the elder, the next dynamic speaker of the house of Israel. Read what you got for him, King. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Bring it out loud. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with everlasting salvation. Israel shall what? Be saved, saved in the Lord, Lord with everlasting salvation. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Right? They didn't say the Chinese man. He didn't say the Catholic man, the, the Christian man. He said Israel would be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Right? All the house of Israel will be saved. That's according to the scriptures. That's why it's so important for you, Blanca, to recognize that you're an Israelite. Because Israel will be saved with an everlasting salvation. Right? God. Uh, give me Luke 21. And 22, Tony. Come on. And Young Lion, my last scripture. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things that are written in this book is going to be fulfilled. That's why we brought it out. The time is now. The scriptures are being fulfilled right before your very eyes. Where you see tornadoes hitting in Rocky Mount. Where you see a heat wave going on across the whole United States. Across the whole world for that matter. 160 degrees in India. 140 degrees in Texas and California and Arizona. 110 degrees down here in North Carolina. That's the scriptures being fulfilled before your very eyes. You understand that, Blanca? That's why it's so important for you to pick up this book, spend some time reading it, and then teach it to your son. Right? Finish what you got, King. Verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give such in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and the wrath upon this people. Right, it's going to be great distress in the land. That's what you see happening right now. Right, the Most High is bringing his wrath upon this, these wicked people. He's bringing his wrath. Who gets, in, in, in 100 degree weather, who gets hurt the most? The white man. His skin turned red. Got skin cancer. He can't stand out in the sun for long. So you know the Most High is bringing his wrath against this wicked kingdom. And he's bringing about his kingdom. So that his people can take over rulership of the kingdom behind Jehoashah. And as Jehoashah leads us, we will be able to rule the entire world under his leadership. And that's why it's so important for you to understand that you're an Israelite. Right, King? Read what you got, Bone King. Finish that out. Salaki. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. And he reads, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. Right. God didn't create this earth in vain. He didn't create it for nothing. He didn't create it to keep us at the bottom of the barrel. He created the earth and he gave Israelites rulership over the earth. Right? He gave his chosen Adam. He was the first one to have dominion and be commanded to have dominion over the earth. And through Adam's line, you get a chosen people of Israel. There's plenty of other people that came from Adam. But the chosen people, as we read for you early in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, the Lord chose us as a special people unto himself. And he didn't create this earth in vain. He created it for us to have rulership over this earth and to rule over his enemies. Right? Read on. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Right? It's only one, one Yahweh. It's only one true and living God. 
And he sent his only begotten son, the Holy Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, to save his people, the Israelites, from their sins. That's why we out here and we teach our people to repent that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's why we out here and we teach people that the time is being fulfilled. That Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus, is going to come back and redeem his people unto his father. And that's why it's high time that we wake up out of our sleep and out of our slumber. Right. And begin to keep the law, statutes, and commandments so that we will make our way prosperous. Right, King? Finish what you got. Verse 19. Bring it out. I have not spoken in secret at, in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Come. See, the Most High declares things that are right. He says, seek him. Seek his face. Seek his kingdom. And when you seek after him and you teach your sons to seek after him, it won't be done in vain. When you teach your children to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you're going to be teaching them to live righteous lives. You're going to teach them to live right and train them up to live righteously and to be lights in their community, to be lights in their schools, to be lights to the rest of their family. And that's why it's so important for you, Blanca, to realize that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. Okay, um, that's my question too. What he said, he said, uh, he said, is there something, something that they know about you, U.S.? That's actually what we just read. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked, right? So, and the, they cover the faces of the judges. These were the original paintings of our people. This was the original painting of Yahweh Shai and his mother Mary. But this guy, the Pope, changed it. So what that's saying is, there's people who know about us. They know that we're the Israelites. They know we're the Israelites. They know that the original paintings were people that were the same complexion as us. But what they did was, you go to most churches, and you go to those churches, and what happens? You see on the walls pictures of white people. Right? They covered the faces of the judges. They covered the faces. They covered this, this, this beautiful brown skin up. They covered it up with white paint. To make it look like they was the people of the scriptures. To make it look like they was the chosen people. But they not. And there's people that know that we are the chosen people. So that's why they that's do right. what they do to try and keep us in sin. They do what they do to try and keep us down at the bottom. Right, that, that's the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church teaches lies. The Catholic Church doesn't teach you... That, you're right, the, the wicked are in control of the world. Right, they got one of the biggest, the Catholic Church is one of the biggest churches. They started the Christian Church. All of the Christian churches are birthed out of the Catholic Church. Right? The Pope is in control of all these different churches across the whole world, especially in Haiti. It's a lot of Catholics in Haiti. Yeah. Right? But they're not teaching you that you're an Israelite. You ever been to a Catholic church and they told you that you're an Israelite? No. You go to Catholic church and, and, and they got statues all around and they're telling you to bow to the statue, to go inside the booth and talk to the, the Catholic uh, priest and tell the Catholic priest your sins. Well, no, the, the scriptures don't say that. The scriptures say repent. No, you're not a Catholic. Would you rather be an Israelite chosen by God, the Most High, or would you rather be a Catholic who taught lies? You, of course you don't know everything. That's why we teach you no, little I, by little. No, I know everything, everything in the church, but I'm there. I'm in bed, I'm Catholic. But you, you, you were raised in a Catholic church. Your mother and your father took you to a Catholic church. Or you, 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 you know about the Catholic church because that's... Your mom is not Catholic. All right, so you're not Catholic either. You're actually an Israelite. That's what we keep trying to teach you and keep trying to get you to understand. You're not a Catholic. The word Catholic is not found in the Bible. Right. The word Israelite is found in the Bible. The tribe of Levi is found in the Bible. And your people, being that they come from the land of Haiti, 
They're called a proverb and a byword. They call themselves Haitian. But according to the scriptures, you would be from the tribe of Levi. You get that, Blanca? All right, this is the last scripture I'm going to leave you with, then I'm going to pass it on to the elder. You give me both John and then Ecclesiastes. John. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you what? If ye love me, keep my commandments. So if you love the Most High, you got to keep his commandments. And that's what we've been teaching you out here today. Teach your children to keep the commandments of the Most High. Because the wages of sin is death. And you don't want your children to come out here and to walk in death, walk in darkness. You want them to walk in the light. The ways of the Catholic Church lead to death. The ways of the Pope lead to death. And you don't want your children to be led to death. You want them to be led to the light. You want them to be light. So teach your children that they're Israelites. And teach them to keep the commandments. Because that's how you love the Most High. You love God by keeping His commandments. And you don't learn that in the Christian Church. The Christian Church is not going to tell you to keep His commandments. The Catholic Church is not going to tell you to keep His commandments. First thing they're going to do is tell you to go to church on what day? Okay, why you say Catholic Church don't mean like it is. That's, it that's, that's something I say, that's a, it looks like it's something, but it's not God. You don't say something that you say, but I say that's something. They're coming close. We'll probably move the table back a little bit so you could get off that street because you're in an all-black shirt, too. I, I know, I know. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the same lady that came by earlier speaking to you. But you understand that no matter what, if it's the big Catholic church, if it's the small Catholic church, they're teaching you lies. And that's not what you want to learn. You don't want to call yourself a Catholic. I don't mind that, but I say that, but I don't mind nothing. I'm no, you're not going to learn nothing in the Catholic Church. You're going to learn listening to your brothers because we're going to teach you the truth. What is the truth? That you are an Israelite. And what tribe, being that your people are from Haiti, your father's a Haitian, what tribe would you be from according to the sign that's right down at your feet with the lion on it? Look straight down. You see the sign down there? All the way at the bottom. Right? All the way at the bottom where the lion is. is that lion? Right? You see the big lion? So what tribe does it say people from Haiti are from? Tribe of what? You got it, go ahead. Israel. Right? And now find Haiti on there. Where you find Haiti at? Or where you find Haitian at? And what's across? What tribe would the... The, the, the Haitians be called the tribe of what? Right down here at the bottom. The tribe of what? Show it to him, show it. It's on the back of your car, okay? Check the back of your car now. There you go. So you would be from the tribe of what? Levi Haiti. You would be from the tribe of what? Say it one more time and get it in your spirit. You would be from the tribe of Levi. Give the brother a hand. All praises, brother. All That's praises. What we've been all praises. To get you to understand all day all that you're not a Catholic, but you are from the tribe of Levi. Right. Right. See that? There you go, my brother. You see the smile on his face now? What's your nationality? Haiti. From the tribe of what? Haiti. No, no, no. Levi, Haiti, I.T. Come! That's how I say, my brother. God, all yeah. praises to the Most High. And with that, I yield, and I'll pass it off to the next dynamic speaker, our elder, Elder Makar from the House of Israel. And we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, the Holy Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Hamashiach, Yahweh Right? Yeah, that's okay. That's all love, praises. I love that. I love Shalom. 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 Hey, Shalom. 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 All right, brother Levi, Shalom. you learned something today, huh? Yeah. All praises to the Most High. Good. Yeah. You say, who are we? The Israelites. We are the, the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. 
We come out here through rain, through snow, through sleet, through shine. It don't matter. We out here. You saw it raining on us? You never see the Catholic Church. You never see the Christian Church come to your community because they scared you, because they threw you away, because they said you weren't of God. You understand? But you are. You are so precious. Your blood is precious. We got to stop spilling it. Judgment is happening every day. You got people out here saying what? That only God can judge me. Well, you're seeing judgment every day. Every time you see Pookie get shot up, that's judgment. Every time you see Ray Ray shoot up something, that's judgment. Right. Every time you see a tornado, gangster, that's judgment. I would love to see you shoot up a tornado. You're not going to do it. That's judgment. See, we came out here to tell you the truth. We don't play games. We not the church. We came to tell you the truth. Nothing but the truth. And the truth will make you free. Give me John 8 and 32. We're going to start off this. You know what I'm saying? You give me Amos uh, 5 and 10. All right? Because we came out here to tell you the truth. We ain't got nothing to lose here. We're not afraid of our people. We come directly to you. Because the Most High told us to. The Most High loves you. The world doesn't, but we do. Bring it out. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Uh -huh. And ye shall know the truth, uh -huh. and the truth shall set you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is, you are an Israelite, brother. That Catholic stuff, they lie to you. That's why every time you close your eyes, you see a white man. That's why every time you see a white man, you give him a break, but you'll kill your own brother. Right. You'll shoot your own brother. Because we hate each other. Come on. Amos 5 and 10. This is the book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse 10. They hate him that rebuke in the gate. They hate us because we come here and we rebuke you and we tell you the truth in the gate, meaning in the hood, in the ghetto. We come here. We're not afraid. We don't sit on the hill in a church and tell you you got to do. We don't have any money out here. We come here to give you the word because the word is free. Come on. And they abhor him that speaketh up uprightly. They abhor us because we speak uprightly. Huh. We speak up against the faggots and lesbians. We speak up against that. We don't get down like that. Neither does your God. Your God is going to judge this. And during Pride Month, did you know your God burnt down a gay church? With his lightning, God is not playing. Everybody out here eating, drinking, chilling, like nothing's happening. That tornado is God. What? Come on. This is the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. Be what? Are upon the sinful, sinful kingdom. Who? Are, are upon, upon the, the sinful, sinful kingdom. kingdom. Behold, the Lord of God, the most high God, which are 10,000 times brighter than the sun are on the sinful kingdom, are on this place. That's why you start to see tornadoes everywhere. I've been down here for almost two weeks. There was a tornado warning every week. And y'all don't understand. That's God. Y'all think it's the weather. Give me uh, Isaiah 29 and 6. That's God. He's pissed off. You know. He's not playing. Don't you realize he flooded the whole earth God. and killed men, women, and child? You think he's gonna be nice to you? He's not playing. Uh, Isaiah 30 and 30. Uh, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 6. Bring it up. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord. Thou shalt be visited of who? Of the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. With thunder. With thunder, come on. And with earthquakes. With earthquakes, come on. And great noise. And great noise, come on. With storm and tempest. With storm and tempest. Tempest is tornadoes, come on. And the flame of devouring fire. And that's why you see all of these forest fires everywhere. Because that's the most high God. He's not playing. We're all playing, but he ain't playing. He's he's judging you every day. Come on. This is what I'm saying. Chapter 30, verse 30. Bring it out. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Uh-huh. And shall shoot the lightning down. He of shall shoot the lightning down off his arm. Come on, with the indication of his anger, uh -huh. and with the flame of a, the various fire, and with the flame of furious fire. This is the Most High God. Y'all think he's soft? Y'all think Satan 
Y'all scared of Satan more than y'all are God. Y'all scared of voodoo more than you are God. Y'all scared of the roots more than you are God. Peace, Elder. The most I God is tearing this place up right in front of your face and you don't know. Is that it? No. We're scattering a tempest of hailstones. Uh-huh. Verse 31. Give me, give me, um. For though the, the voice of the Lord shall the. Bring that back. Shalak. Shalak. Verse 31. Uh-huh. For though the voice of the Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. Give me, um, um, wisdom of Solomon. 5 and uh, 21. And you give me, um, give me Revelations 18 and 5. I'm going to let brother, I'm going to let brother pull that. Can't, I say, can't see it. Can't see it? Uh-huh. You got the bad eyes? I got bad eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some classes. Hey, don't worry about it, wisdom man. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 5, 21. It's the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 21. Bring it out. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts uh -huh. go abroad uh -huh. from the clouds uh -huh. as from a well-drawn bow. So it says the right, the right aiming thunderbolt, that's God. He's sitting up there with the thunderbolts like a great orchard. And every time he, you see lightning strike something, he tears it up. That's God. Keep on messing with the word. You're going to get a thunderbolt. Come on. Shall they fly to the mark? They fly to the mark because the most high God don't miss. Come on. And hailstones full of bread. And hailstones full of bread. Come on. Shall be cast out as a stone. Then he cast those, those hailstones out of his bow. Come on. And the water of the sea shall rage. And the water of the sea shall rage. Come on. Rage against them. Uh -huh. And the flood shall cruelly drown them. No, shall nicely drown them. Shall and the flood shall cruelly drown them. No, you should be swimming in that day. And the flood shall cruelly drown them. Yeah, buddy. The most I got is not a joke. It's not a game. And that's not going to stop. People are ignorant. Don't be ignorant. Bring it out, Elder. When the most high God comes down on your ass, you're gonna be crying. That's right. You're gonna be wishing you 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 are afraid of him and not Satan. Yes. You're gonna wish you weren't mocking the men of the Lord out here. Y'all think it's a game, it's a joke. We sit out here, it's dark. We're not afraid. We out here to get a word. Where am I at? Who, who I gave something to? Give me Revelation 18 and 5. This book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 5. Bring it out. For her sins have reached unto heaven. For this place sins have reached unto heaven. Come on. And God has remembered her iniquity. And God has remembered her iniquity. That's why you're seeing all of this thunder. That's why you're seeing all of these lightning. That's why you're seeing all of these forest fires. That's why you're seeing all these tornadoes. That's why you're seeing all of these hurricanes. Huh? Come on. Verse 23. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, and like a storm shall blow them away. And like a storm shall blow them away. Come on. Thus iniquity shall lay waste. He's going to lay waste to all of this iniquity. Come on. Shall lay waste the whole earth. Uh -huh. And ill dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. And he's going to overthrow the thrones of the mighty. And he's going to do it with weather. He said, he said that he visits the earth with storms. With tempests, with earthquakes, Teach, with elder. fires. The Most High God is judging you every day. Teach, Elder. He's judging every day. And you guys just riding like it's nothing. You guys think it's a joke. You understand? But the Most High God ain't playing. Come on, give me um, Revelation 16 and 12. Because hold on. Y'all, pastors, instead of teaching y'all about prosperity and everything, they're supposed to be teaching you about the signs. I ask anybody, what seal are we in? I guarantee you, nobody even knows what we're talking about when we're talking about seals. There's seven seals that the angels deal with. And once that, that seventh seal is done with, it is done. What? It is over. Well, what seal are we in? Let's read about it. Come on. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 16, and verse 12. Come on. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river. See? The sixth angel is pouring out the vial upon the river. Come on. Ephrates and the water thereof. Uh -uh, bring that back. That's the Euphrates. Come on. Get it right. Euphrates uh -huh. and the water thereof uh -huh. was dried up. And check that out. Google it. The Euphrates River is dried up now. 
The Euphrates dried up. That means the sixth seal is here, y'all. That's right. Come on. That the way of the kings of the east uh -huh. might be prepared. So that's the kings of the east. That's talking about all the armies and everything of the east. That's why you're seeing Russia. That's why you're seeing China. That's why you're seeing all of them getting it together now to take us to war over here. Come on. Right. Verse 13. And I saw thee three unclean spirits like frogs uh -huh. come, come out the mouth of dragon. Come on. And out the mouth of beast. Come on. And out the mouth of false Prophecy. Come on, all the false prophecy, yeah, everything. Dad. You understand? All of this is coming to pass now. Come on. Verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils. They're all the spirits of devils that you're seeing. That's why you're seeing them coming after our children with homosexuality. That's why you see it. They're coming after our babies now. Come on. Working miracles which go forth unto the king of the earth uh -huh. and the whole and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. What's the name of that battle? Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his promise. Blessed is he that watcheth. We are the watchmen. We watching the signs. We telling you what's coming. The Euphrates is dried up. That's the sixth seal. Armageddon's next. All the armies are getting together for war. Right. This is not a time to be playing. Come on. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Because you don't keep on the garment. Because you don't watch the signs. You're walking around here naked and ashamed. And you're going to be caught like a thief in the night. Come on. Verse 16. And he gathered them together into the place called in the Hebrew tongue. Um, Armageddon. Come on. Armageddon. Read it again. And he gathered them together into a place in in the our Hebrew tongue. Come on, baby. You can do it. And the, and he gathered them together into a place in the Hebrew tongue, uh -huh. Armageddon. And he's bringing them uh -huh. into Armageddon. Armageddon is that last war, baby. Right. That's World War Three. That's what's coming. That's what's coming, y'all. Come on. Hold on. Verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial... And this is the seventh angel. We're on the sixth seal. You ain't got a lot of time. There's one more seal to be bust. And what's going to happen when that seventh angel? Come on. And there came a great voice out of the temple uh -huh. of heaven. Saying what? From the throne saying, it is done. Saying what? Saying it is, it is done. done. It is what? It, it is, is done. done. It is what? It, it is, is done. done. That's the next seal. It's not a game, y'all. That's the next seal. We in the sixth seal. The next seal says it is done. Coming from the throne of the mighty Lord, of the mighty God, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shemel Shai. Oh, that's right. It's not a game, brothers and sisters. That's why we out here. We out here in the rain. We out here in the dark. Because we want to warn you. We came out here for y'all. Because I used to be out here like this. I'm from Jersey, though. But my family's from here. My last name is Armwood. Y'all know my family. I came down here to tell y'all the truth, all the way from Jersey. Huh? Huh? Let's go. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 18, and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. From what? Come, Come out, out of her, my people. people. What? Come, Come out, out of her, my people. people. That ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plague. That you receive not of her plague. What's one of her plays? Give me, um, give me, uh, 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 Zachariah. Give me Zachariah 14 to 12. We're going to see one of the plagues that you need to come out of her so that you can be saved from. It's not a game here. Zachariah uh, 14 to 12, please. Will you get it? Come, come, come. It's not a game. Y'all y'all running around here like it's a game. It's not. Y'all scared of the wrong things. And y'all don't fear the right things. And how about show me how shot is the right thing to fear? You can't see it? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to get it for you, though. You get it for me. Give me Zachariah real quick. Zachariah. Right. Get them young eyes. Get them young eyes. Good. Good. Next time we'll come out a little earlier. You know what I'm saying? But I, I like I like to come and hit these people at night. Because they, they don't think we'll do it. Give me Zachariah 14, 12. Real fast. Come on, baby. Click on that sword. 
1412, because there's a plague that he said come out of her so you wouldn't partake it. 1412, come on. I got you. you got me? Hey, come on, pray. This the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 12. Bring it up. And this shall be the pledge, where then the Lord... The plague, the plague, bring it back, come on. And this shall be the plague, where is the Lord will will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Come on. Their flesh shall consume away while it stand upon their feet. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet. This is one of the plagues, come on. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their eyes are going to melt in their holes, come on. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. And their tongue is going to consume away in their mouth. What is that, guys? One of the plagues is nuclear war. Nuclear war! And Armageddon is setting up. Give me Isaiah 56 at 10 and 11. I want whoever get it first, bring it. Let me know. Isaiah 56, 10 and 11. Nuclear war is on the horizon. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 10. See, hold on. This is, this is the pastors. This is your Christian pastors. They're supposed to be warning you, you in the sixth seal. They're supposed to be warning you that time is short. Hey, how you doing, brother? They're supposed to be warning you, but they're not. They're a bunch of lazy dogs. Come on. His watchmen are blind. His watchmen. Who are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? The Christian church. The pastors are supposed to be the watchmen. They're supposed to be watching these signs and, and reading these scriptures and dividing it properly and coming out and warning you. Come on. They are all ignorant. The Christian pastors are all ignorant. Come on. They're all dumb. They're all dumb. Come on. Dumb dogs. They're dumb dogs. Come on. They cannot bark. They cannot bark. What does a dog do when it barks? A dog warns you that there's danger coming. The Christian pastors are supposed to be warning you that this is the sixth seal. That war is coming. That Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is coming back shortly. That's right. He's supposed to be teaching you that. But they're a bunch of dumb dogs. And they're lazy. Come on. Sleeping. Lying down. They're sleeping. They're lying down. They're lying down on the job. They only worried about their, their pocketbooks. Come on. Loving to slumber. They love to sleep. Come on. Yay. They are greedy dogs. They are what? They, they are, are greedy, greedy dogs. dogs. They are what? They, they are, are greedy, greedy dogs. dogs. That's why they give you three three buckets coming around the church. They are greedy dogs. Come on. Which can never have enough. They can never have enough. That's why they sitting up here, some of them TD Jakes bragging about having a jet. You know what I'm saying? Clef Low Dollar, he had a jet. He had to get a brand new jet. He needed 65 million. They're greedy dogs. And they never have enough, Teach these other. Christian pastors. Come on. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They're always talking about they have a flock, but they don't understand. Bring out um, Jeremiah 23, 1 through 4. That's it on that? They all look to their own way. They all look to their own way. Come on. Everyone for his gain. Everyone for his gain. That's why they got colleges now. You understand? To be a pastor. The most high. God's supposed to call you. They got colleges to be a prophet. They got colleges to be an apostle. They got colleges for all of this stuff. Most high God is supposed to call you. They are greedy dogs. And they only look out for their own gain. Come That's on. right. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Uh-huh. Come ye, they say. I will fetch wine and that's, we will drink. That's it, brother. That's it right there, brother. Come on, bring out that Jeremiah 23. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Bring it out. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Now, that, that's the most high God saying woe. Woe means destruction, destruction. to the pastors that are lying to, the, to his sheep. That's and right. Scattering them. Come on. Save the Lord. Uh -huh. Therefore, thus save the Lord uh -huh. God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Uh huh. Come on. Ye have scattered my flock. He's talking to them. He said, you scattered my flock. Come on. And driven them away. And you driven them away from me. That's why we're all out on street corners now. You don't believe in the church no more. Because you caught it in its lies. I don't blame you. I left it too. But I didn't leave God. I left the church. Come on. 
and have not visited them, behold, I will visit upon you uh -huh. the evil of your doings. And he's going to visit upon them the evil of what they do. Come on. Save the Lord. Uh -huh. And I will gather the remaining of my flock uh -huh. out of all the countries, uh -huh. whither I have driven them, uh -huh. and will bring them to their fold. That's what we out here doing. We're trying to gather the flock and bring y'all back to the fold. Bring y'all back to God and out of the church. Right. Come back to this word. Come back to the most high God. Come back to his law, statutes, and commandments. Come back to your nationality. That's right. That's what we're here doing. We're trying to bend you back to the marriage. That's right. Good. Good. All right, so let's go to Joel 3 and 9. And you give me um, Revelation 6 and uh, 15. Bring it out. Come on. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9. Bring it out. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. See, this is what you're seeing happening. Their time is about to happen. And y'all act like y'all don't see it. Prepare this. It's war amongst the Gentiles. Come on. Prepare war. Prepare what? Prepare, prepare war. Prepare, right. prepare, prepare war. war. Nah, everything's going to be all right. Make America great again. Prepare war. Come on. Wake up the mighty men. Yes. Wake up the mighty men. No. Wake up the faggots. No. Wake up the little Nas X's. Come on. Let all the men of war draw near. Let all the men of war draw near. Come on. Let them come up. Uh-huh. Verse 10. Come on. Beat your plowshares. It's a sword. You just beat your plowshares. Get your weapons together. Come on. And your front hooks. Uh-huh. It's a spear. Uh-huh. Let the weak say, I am strong. That's why you got those weak countries now. They looking at America and saying, we got nuclear bombs too, y'all. We strong too. What you got, we ain't got. Yo, we ready to take you to war. Come on. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathens, and gather yourselves together round about. Uh huh. There is called thy mighty ones uh -huh. to come down, O Lord. Uh huh. Come on. Verse 12. Let the heathen be waiting. Uh huh. And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. So he's bringing them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's the Middle East. That's why all the wars you ain't go down there. Y'all ain't paying attention. But that's why we the wrong. We come to tell you the truth. We not here for your money. We don't want it. We don't want your money. We want you to come home to this law, statutes, and commandments. Come home to your God, Yahweh, by Jimmy Alashai. Come on. For their will, I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So the Most High said he's going to bring them into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Armageddon, and he's going to judge all the nations. Hey, hey, I, I want to go to Revelation real quick. Yeah, give me that, because everybody thinks that Jesus is sore. We, we had a class on this. I don't want to get deep into it. But your Christ is the true Grim Reaper. That's right. He's the Grim Reaper. And y'all scared of the devil. Ha! Scared of Satan and demons. And they're scared of your God. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 6 and verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, uh -huh. and the chief captain, uh -huh. and the mighty men, uh -huh. and every born man, uh -huh. and every free man, uh -huh. hid themselves in the day. So all of them, they hid themselves in the day. Come on. And in the rock of the mountain. They hid in the rock of the mountain. Come on. And so the mountains and rocks fall on them. They wanted the mountains and the rocks to fall on them. They're so afraid in this day. Come on. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne. Come on. And from the wrath of the Lamb. And from what? From the wrath of the Lamb. And from what? From the wrath of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Who's the Lamb of God? Jesus Christ. He's not coming back talking. Not my Jesus. Yeah, sweet Jesus is coming to put blood in the street. That's right. Right. Come on. Verse 16. Uh, verse 17. Select it. For the great day of his wrath is come. For the great day of the wrath of the Lamb of Jesus Christ is come. Yeah, ignore me now. I'm going to cry later. Y'all better listen to these words. This ain't me speaking. That's this right. is God's word. This is what they won't teach you in church. Right. We coming out here to teach you. We coming to y'all. 
because everybody else don't come to y'all. We do. And we're going in the book of Revelation, the book of prophecy, and we're telling you what's coming. Uh, right. Y'all think sweet Jesus is a punk. He's coming to put blood in the street. Come on. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 14. Come on. And I look, and behold, a white cloud. Uh -huh. And upon the cloud, one sat like a man. The son of man. Come on. Son of man. But who's the son of man? That's Jesus Christ. They see him sitting on a cloud. Come on. Having on his head a golden crown. Because he's the king of kings. He got a golden crown on his head. Come on. And in his hand, a sharp Take a deep breath. Take, Take your time. Breath. Take your time. Come on. Do it again. Oh, pray. Come on. And I look, and behold, a white cloud. Uh -huh. And upon the cloud once sat like unto the son of man. The son of man is Jesus Christ. Come on. Having on his head a golden crown. Having on his head a golden crown because he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Come on. Uh-huh. And in his hand, uh -huh. a sharp sickle. Now, who has a sharp sickle in his hand? The Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper is actually Christ. Each other. The Grim Reaper, he has a sharp sickle in his hand. Come on. And another angel came out of the temple crying uh -huh. with a loud voice to him uh -huh. that sat on the cloud. Uh -huh. Thus in thy sickle and reap. Thus in thy sickle and reap. Hate Christ be the Grim Reaper. And he's coming for blood. Let's go. For the time is come for thee to reap. Uh huh. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. For the wickedness of this earth is ripe. Come on. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle. And Christ thrust in his sickle. No questions asked. Come on. On the earth. Uh huh. And the earth was reaped. And the earth was reaped. Come on. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. Uh huh. And another angel came out from the altar. From the altar. Come on, baby. You got it. Which had power over fire. Uh -huh. And cried uh -huh. with a loud cry to him. Come on. That had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle. He said unto Christ, Thrust in your sharp sickle again. Come on. And gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. And grab up all the wicked of the earth. Come on. For her grapes are fully ripe. Because the wickedness of this earth is fully ripe now. Come on. And the angel thrust in his sickle unto the earth. And he thrust in his sickle on the earth. Check this out now. And gathered the vine of the earth. And gathered all the wicked of the earth. Come on, this is Jesus Christ. Come on. And cast it unto the great whippers. Wine press. Come wine on. press, Locky. And he cast it into the great wine press. Come on. Teach up. The wrath of God. Of the wrath of God. The wine press of the wrath of God. Now let's see what comes out there. Let's see what comes out there, wine press. Your sweet Jesus, check this out. And the wine press was troubled without the city, and blood uh, came out of the wine press. And what came out of the wine press? And, and blood, blood came out of the wine press. And what came out of the wine press? And, and blood, blood came, came out of the, the wine, wine press. press. And blood came out of the wine press. Come on. Even up to the horse bridle. Up, up to the horse's bridle. Anybody know what the bridle of a horse is? The bridle is what they put in the mouth of the horse. What they steer the horse. So Yahweh shot, or Jesus Christ is coming to put blood in the street to the mouth of a horse. And y'all think he's so. Come on. By the space of a thousand and six hundred for long. And that's for 150 to 200 miles. So Yahweh shot, or the, or the world is really called Jesus Christ. He ain't coming back to talk. He left us the lamb. He's coming back as the lion of Judah. That's right. I would love to see you go sit in the cage with a lion right now. Not my Jesus. Not my Jesus. <laughs> Jesus ain't <laughs> soft, y'all. We here to tell you the truth, man, because we love you. That's right. And we speak like men. That's right. We're not coming to you with smooth talk. That's right. We're coming to you straight in your face like we're supposed to. Right. Because we love you. You don't see no other people out here. You don't see the church come to y'all. We here. The Israelites are here. All praise to the Most High. And with that, I say what? Kum Yashem. Kum Yashem. Kum Yashem. Kum Yashem. Kum Yashem. Kum Yashem. Come. Kum Yashem. Kum Yashem. Who got next? We got next. Who got next? We got next. Who got next? We got next. Follow. 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 What we gonna do? Take the key. What we gonna do? Take the key. What we gonna do? Take the key. Now. 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 All praises, brother. All praises to the most high. Yes, sir. All praises to the most high.
Welcome to the truth. God. God. All praises. All praises. All praises to the most high, Elder. Come. Uh,